Hey there, folks. Talking about your new sensations. Lou Reed, 1984, New Sensations. This is one of the first handful of albums I bought by Lou Reed, and I loved it from the start, and I still do. It's a marvelous album. Now, I know a lot of new Lou Reed fans might not share that opinion, but I think it's fantastic. Well, the 80s were great for Lou Reed, in my opinion. I really do think so. Well, you got the Blue Mask. Fantastic album. Legendary Hearts. Fantastic. New Sensations. And this one here, we've got, well, you've got the, the Robert Quine issue. He didn't play on this uh, album. Lou Reed does pretty much all the guitars. There was some reported conflict between Twine, uh, Wine, uh, Quine <clears throat> and uh, Reed. But whatever. I think Lou Reed does a fantastic job here by himself with on guitar. We got a little bit of guitar, a little rhythm guitar by Fernando Saunders on a couple of tracks, but, you know, Joystick and My Friend George. But yeah, most of it is Lou Reed. Now, that's fine with me. Now, I, I love Robert Quine. Give me, I think he did, did a fantastic job on those first two albums there. But uh, Lou Reed's one of my favorite guitarists. That's odd. You like John McLaughlin? blistering virtuosity, but yet you like Lou Reed, who plays, you know, vanilla chords and all? You bet. You bet I do. I've always loved Lou Reed's style, his way, the way his guitar sounds, the way he approaches it. I always have. And I think he sounds fantastic here. Great production here. Who's this? What's the producer here? Oh, what was his name? There, uh, John Jansen and Lou Reed. They, together they produced it. But really good production. Sounds fantastic. I used to have this on cassette tape and I'd drive all over on trips and drive my wife crazy playing this. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah, it's fantastic stuff, man. You got uh, Lou Reed, you got Fernando Saunders again with that great, that, that very milky bass style he has. Funky, superb bassist. Speaking of John McLaughlin, he played with John McLaughlin and a lot of other jazzers and what have you. Fred Meyer on drums. We got Peter Wood here on, on piano and synthesizers and accordion. Now, Peter Wood's played with everybody, including Al Stewart. He, he actually co-wrote Year of the Cat by, with Al Stewart. He's, he's the one playing the piano there, I believe. Very good play, piano player. And also, very interesting here, here's another John McLaughlin reference, um, El Shankar, the amazing Indian violinist. Yeah, he played with uh, McLaughlin on um, Shakti, the band Shakti. I think, Shankar, I think El Shankar played with Zappa. He played with a lot of people, but he's a superb violinist. Very, very expressive way he plays, uh, plays in between tones. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. And he does a really good job on here. He, he contributes violin to um, doing the things that we want to. But you know, it's just not like, you know, a fiddle. No, no, he, has, he creates texture and sound on that track that really brings out, brings out that track. See, that's the other thing here. This is the 80s. And, of course, you're going to get some 80s-isms. You're going to get a little bit of the 80s drums, a little bit of the 80s feel, but not all the way through. There's a lot of variation here on this album. The first two tracks, I remember when I first heard it. The first two tracks, I'm kind of like, mm, mm. I love them now, but at first, I'm like, mm. What were they? I love you, Suzanne. Kind of a hopping, almost a new wave, kind of a hopping feel. And then uh, Endlessly Jealous of You. Endlessly Jealous of You. Being Endlessly Jealous of Me. Didn't care for the first two tracks back then as much as I do now. But then it gets into my red joysticks and turn to me when I, I love that track. Here's another thing that he does a lot here and elsewhere. He'll start the song off with just a guitar. Just some, just some basic 
when I say vanilla chords, those of you who play guitar, you know what I'm talking about. You know, first open position or first position or whatever, right up. <clears throat> and um, setting a groove, just the guitar. And then he sings, then maybe the bass comes in. But at some point after about the second verse, then those drums come in, it just comes alive. I love how he does that on here. And he does that on several tracks. A turn to me, doing the things that we want to, fly into the sun. Oh, yeah. So I love that feel. I loved it back then. I love it today. It just gives me goosebumps. All right, let's go through this thing. <clears throat> okay. I love you, Suzanne. I, well, there's something... Let me tell you, this album is fun because at this time, Lou was living, I think, um, was it Jersey? Out in the country. He had a nice home, a lot of land, had his motorcycle, he had friends coming over. He had a pond that would freeze and they'd go ice skating with his friends. And He was living a regular life. He wasn't the New York City street guy that he was portrayed earlier on, you know. I mean, he still had a love for that. He, he talks about here uh, high in the city. You know, so he does talk about the city a lot, and he also talks about the city when he does uh, things about doing the things we want to. And anyhow, anyhow, but yeah, he's living this life that's very almost boring. <laughs> well, I mean, like like regular people, like we all do, and doing what he wanted to do, and that and that theme kind of runs through this album in several places. Doing what we want to do. And it opens up with Love You, Suzanne. The, the determination to do what you want to do, what you got to do, to be happy. Whether you be doing things that are good or bad or whatever, you're just having fun. You be your own person. And that can be attractive. And he sings on here, you do what you got to do. You do everything you can. You do what you want to do. I love you, Suzanne. So he finds that attractive in Suzanne that she wants to do. Who the heck is Suzanne? You know, I don't know who that is. It's not his wife. I don't. His wife was um. What was his wife's name? Sylvia. So I don't know who this song is written about. If you guys know, let me know. But yeah, it has an upbeat feel and some of that '80s drum. And then the next song, Endlessly Jealous. <laughs> Musically not the highlight of the album, but it's kind of fun. It has a nice groove. It's about the repeating cycle of jealousy that just feeds on itself and destroys everything. Endlessly jealous of you being endlessly jealous of me. You know how it is. If you had Anybody who's been in relationships can relate to this album. That's another thing I'll say this is that if you if you don't know if you like Lou Reed much, check out this album. you probably like it. Especially if you don't mind a little 80s feel every now and then. You grew up in the 80s and you kind of like it, okay? Oh, yeah. The next song is a boot. My Red Joystick. <laughs> there he is on the cover. See, at this time, you know, he's living out there in the rural area, but he's a gadget freak. He's got all the gadgets. You know, all the, all the games that were... He's up to date. So he had a lot of the video games and stuff of, the, of that time, of the 80s. And I love how you have the double and tender <laughs> of my red joystick, meaning my, my game thing, or it can mean other things too. <laughs> it's a hilarious take on the man-woman relationship. Yeah, we've all been there. I love some of these lines. See, that's the thing about this album too. It's a very fun album. It's a happy album for the most part. Uh, even when he sings about death. On uh, flying to the sun, it's, it's it's happy, it's joyous, um, and it's funny. Anyhow, the first bite of the apple made Eve smart. By the way, there's no apple. Eve didn't need an apple. If you read Genesis, there's no apple in there. But anyhow, whatever. The second bite taught her how to break men's hearts. The third bite taught her how to strut her stuff. But she never got to the fourth bite that said, enough is enough. <laughs> enough is enough, baby. I've had enough of you. You can keep your dresses. You can keep your jewels. You can keep the color TV. Those soaps just make me sick. What is it with women and soaps? And pillows. What's with the pillows? 
All I'm asking you leave me is my little red joystick. In other words, you can have all this stuff here, but just give me, let me have my red joystick, will you? <laughs> Don't take that too. You can use your brain and think about that a little bit. <clears throat> Turn to me. I've always loved this one. I love the feel of it. This is pure Lou Reed. I love it. No matter what happens, what BS you have to deal with, even if it comes from a loved one, you can always turn to me. If you gave up major vices, well, like Lou had done to this point, he was pretty clean at this point now. I mean, it was no alcohol to speak of, no drugs. He pretty much cleaned his act, I think. <clears throat> and you're between a hard place and a wall, and your car breaks down in traffic on the street. Remember, I'm the one who loves you. You can always give me a call. Turn to me, turn to me, turn to me. Don't talk down, that Fernando Saunders bass. Pow! The next song, the title track, New Sensations. Lou sings about all the new stations, well, new to him at this point, that he's enjoying living out in the country, in the small towns. So different from a city upbringing, you know. And, he, and in this song, he has a lot of spot-on philosoph philosophizing about things. Well, in other words, I agree with it. That means he was is really good because I agree with it. Some favorite lines. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these. But I don't like guilt, be it stoned or stupid. Man, don't, I hear you, Lou. I don't like guilt, be it stoned or stupid. I hate guilt. What a horrible emotion. It's my albatross, to be honest with you. I do so much out of guilt. But you know, if I don't, then I feel guilty. That I, no. <laughs> I want the principles of a timeless muse. That's a great line. I want the principles of a timeless muse. I want to eradicate my negative views. He's trying to be positive here. And get rid of those people who are always on a down. It's easy enough to tell what is wrong. But that's not what I want to hear all night long. Ain't that the truth? And, you know, I disconnected. I turned off the news years ago. And, man, what a great thing that is to do. Just turn it off. They're all lying to you anyway. I took my GBC. <laughs> I remember when I first heard this. I remember I thought he was saying I took my chimpanzee out for a ride. <laughs> I took my GBC out, GPC out for a ride. The engine felt good between my thighs. The air felt cool. It was 40 degrees outside. I rode to Pennsylvania near the Delaware Gap. Sometimes I got lost and had to check the map. I stopped at a roadside diner for a burger and a Coke. Does it get any better than that, folks? There were some good, there were some country folk and some hunters inside. Somebody got themselves married and somebody died. So he's listening to the conversation, she said. I went to the jukebox and played a hillbilly song. It's just good time music, man. Put a little Hank Williams on. A little George Jones. They was arguing about football as I waved and went outside. See, see, the thing about Lou Reed, a lot of people might not know, is he loved sports. Like football, he was a sports fanatic. You would never think of that, would you? Lou Reed, but he was. And I headed for the mountains feeling warm inside. I love that GPS so much, you know I could kiss her. Ooh, new sensations. Talk about your new sensations. He's just really reveling in this, this new life he's got at this point. This next song I love. See, the thing is, I think if you like the kind of grooves that are on this album, you're going to really love it. This is pure Lou Reed grooves, man. Again, he's talking about doing what we want to do and what we're driven to do creatively and otherwise. This is the, out, the song. This is the, one of the songs that's got a great uh, violin by El Shankar. He's kind of holding a drone on there, creating a sort of like John Cale used to do with his viola. The other night we went to see Sam's play. He's talking here about Sam Shepard's 1983 play, Fool for Love. I love Sham, Sam Shepard. And he also is talk, he's talking about Scorsese too. Not a huge Scorsese fan, but a lot of people are, including Lou. It reminds me of the movies Marty made about New York. You know, Martin, Martin Scorsese. 
True Love, Meet the Raging Bull. This is Scorsese's 1980 film, The Rag Raging Bull, of course. Doing the things that I, you, he, she, we, they want to. In other words, do what you want to do. Tear off the shackles. Just, just do what you want to do. That's when the true genius comes out. You just, just break free of everything. The next, tra next track, is it, it really has Lou's stamp on this one, too. What Becomes a Legend Most is a poignant portrayal of a touring performer. It's probably one of the songs that's got a little bit of a darkness to it. What Becomes a Legend Most when she's alone in a hotel lobby? Some bad champagne and some foreign bottled beer. When the musicians have come and then leave her. Besides being a legendary star, lying in bed cold and regal. Lying in bed watching a talk show on TV. 50 days in 50 cities. Everyone says she looks pretty. At least as pretty as a legend should. 50 days could wear you down. 50 cities flying by. A different man in each different hotel. If you're not careful, work can get around. What becomes a legend most when she's lying in her hotel room? What becomes a legend most? Well, baby, tonight it's you. <clears throat> It's an interesting song. The next one, Fly Into the Sun, I posted here on my channel recently because I had an old friend that I, well, I met this guy back in the 80s by the time I was getting into Lou Reed and these albums. That's when I met him, and I've known him for many years, and there was a period of time when we lost track, of, I couldn't find him. He's got one of those names that you can't find, you can't Google, really, because everybody has the same name. <clears throat> but we reconnected uh, a little while ago, and I found out about his health concerns and all, and he passed on uh, last week. He didn't. He, he never cared for Lou Reed too much, but I still posted this song in memory of him. I absolutely love the lyric about facing up to the inevitable with courage and head held high. Uh, I've experienced the death of multiple loved ones over this past year, and uh, this song is perfect for how I feel about about this type of thing. I'm not going to do the whole song here. I just think, sing, uh, uh, recite some of it here. I would not run from the Holocaust. I would not run from the bomb. Bomb. I'd welcome the chance to meet my maker and fly into the sun. I'd break up into a million pieces and fly into the sun. You know. I would not run from the blazing light. I would not run from its rain. I'd see it as an end to misery and end to worldly pain. I'd shine by the light of the unknown moment to end this worldly pain. The earth is weeping, the sky is shaking, the stars split to their core, and every proton and unnamed neutron is fusing in my bones. And an unnamed mammal is darkly rising as man burns from his tomb. I'm talking about cremation here. And I look at this as a blissful moment to fly into the sun. I'd burn up into a million pieces and fly into the sun. To end this mystery, answer my mystery, I look at this as a wondrous moment to end this mystery and fly into the sun. Just a really, really good song. Simple, um, very Lou, um, but it really helped me get over some of these passings of friends and family. Okay, the next song, My Friend George, What's the Wood? <laughs> this is Lou's favorite song on the album, at least from a 1989 Rolling Stone interview that he gave. George, he said, is nobody in particular, which is probably the case with Suzanne, too, but I don't know. See, a lot of times, you know, he writes songs. He's a writer. And he writes songs from the point of view of a narrator. That's not always necessarily him, of course. It's about George with his killing stick. <laughs> it's a good song. Hey, bro, what's the word? Talking about my friend George. I knew George since he's eight. I always thought he was great. Anything that George would do, you know that I would do it, too. George liked music, and George liked to fight. He worked out in a downtown gym every night. I'd spar with him when work was done. We split lips, but it was all in fun. Next thing I hear, George has got his stick, and he's using it for more than t kicks. I see him in a, down at Smalley's bar. He was wired up. I tried to calm him down. Avenge yourself, he says to me. Avenge yourself for, for humanity. Avenge yourself for the weak and the poor. Stick it to these guys. Fight through their heads. Well, the fight is my music. The stick is my sword. And you know that I love you, so please don't say a word. 
Can't you hear the music playing, the anthem? It's my call. And the last I seen of George was him running through the door, talking about my friend George. People are kind of going in a different direction somewhat there. The next song, High in the City. This has got a little bit of a reggae feel, which is really popular to have in the 80s. <clears throat> Back in the city with a new sensation, sensational attitude, if you will. Don't want to talk politics today. Yeah, you don't want to go down with these pinheads that want to sit around and talk politics and current events. Hell, he's, he's, he's had his slate wiped it's clean living in the country. He's just visiting in the city. He wants to enjoy the city without a bunch of knuckleheads. I feel too good to let me have my way. Oh, I feel too good. Let me have my way. Let's let's grab a pie. Let's hit the park. I'll kiss and hug you till it gets dark. <laughs> what, a, what a great attitude. High in the city and you looking so pretty. Feeling pretty witty getting high off in the city. <laughs> the next song I've always loved. Down at the arcade, down at the arcade. It's one of these songs when you first hear it and you go, what the heck is it? But hey, he was into these games, man. And let's face it, arcades are fun. It's just the way it is. Get your roll of quarters. <laughs> Back then in the 80s, you had arcade games like Defender and Robotron. And these, these are referenced in this song. Oh, I'm the great defender. Listen to my song. I really hope you like it. It isn't very long. It's rooted in the 50s, but as hard as in 1984. And if you really like it, then I'll sing it for you once more. Down at the arcade, down at the arcade. Down at the arcade, down at the arcade. Can it get more fun than this album? I don't think so. This is just a fantastic listen. So if you like Lou Reed and you don't have that one, check it out. Even if you don't like Lou Reed, check it out. You might like it. After that album, we get we go a little further into the 80s sound a little bit more. Probably the most of his 80s output, and that is on Mistrial. Well, another album I like that some people don't like. It's not my highest ranked album, of course. Not nearly as high as uh, ranked as, as th these three albums are. I mean, no, no, these are fantastic here. But yeah, it's got some good moments on this, and I'll get to those later. I'll try not to spend so much time in between of these reviews. But yeah, video violence and all. Yeah, the original rapper, Mama's Got a Lover. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. And this one's produced by Lou Reed and Fernando Sanders. So I'm looking forward to talking about that one. Probably get to that next week. Okay, folks, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed this album. I've been listening to it like crazy lately and just having a great time. I love Lou Reed. Just absolutely love it. Take care. Bye-bye.